Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. Uh, today we have a 2005 or 06 F-150 543 valve, of course, uh, that has a dead misfire on cylinder number two. So with a dead misfire, it can be any one of the systems, either uh, ignition, fuel, or even base engine. So today we're going to walk you through the diagnosis and uh, how I approach a situation like this. Uh, and so you guys can kind of follow along at home and you know, diagnose your own Ford uh, that has these problems because they are common enough and you wanna know what direction you're going so you're not throwing parts at them. Uh, diagnosis is key here to pinpoint the cause. Scan tool's loaded up, let's check it out. All right, here we go. You see it's an 06 F-150, uh, about 160 some thousand miles on. It's pretty common for this age of a vehicle. Things still chugging along, looks stock under the hood. Uh, so the first thing I do is I will go in and I will check mode six data. And this will give us history data uh, for the vehicle from the last couple of drive cycles to let us know what's been going on, uh, what kind of values it's seeing. Um, and these values are good, even if you don't have a check engine light, because these values are set. Uh, this, this, this data is recorded in history. Um, to identify cylinders may be an issue, but not passing the federal emissions threshold to set a check engine light just yet. So this will show you like right here, we get down to the misfire data uh, right here, and then it breaks down by each one of the cylinders. And this is all history data. So even if it's not bad enough to set a check engine light, they'll still record it in here. So ideally you should see zero like this or this or maybe one or two. Usually it's zero though. Look at cylinder two. Look at all the hits on cylinder two. Obviously an issue, okay? Uh, but just in case there's other cylinders that are an issue you wanna go through, scroll through real quick and see. Like that one has one, no big deal. Okay, so definitely cylinder two. That's what the uh, most six data is seeing. Good information. Now let's pull actual codes. We pulled codes on there. And now uh, 1000 code, obviously because the customer cleared it out. Uh, so all the systems had not been completed yet. 316, because of the horrible misfire on number two, ignore this one. You want to concentrate on the specific cylinder that is misfiring. So cylinder two, misfire. It's all pretty darn simple. And this helps us pinpoint what's going on. Now, if your scan tool has the power balance test on it, which a lot of them do, I think even the four scan does. It's not as fancy as this one, but it does have it. Uh, where you can watch the live power balance of the engine. So we're gonna go ahead and start it up and we'll see if cylinder two is actually misfiring. Da, 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 da. Boom, you see that deep V in there? Dead misfire at idle, okay? So the very next thing we're gonna do here, um, and again, most scan tools have this feature on the Fords, is we are going to run a uh, relative compression test just because you guys may have noticed it, may have heard it while it was cranking before it actually started. It sounded a little uneven, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do this and we're gonna do a, a relative compression test on here. Go ahead and crank for 10 seconds. You hear how uneven that cranking is? Even without a scan tool, you can tell that something is wrong. So this, the, the cylinders that are adjacent to cylinder two, you can ignore. So cylinder one's dropped down a little bit, not a big concern, okay? Uh, but cylinder two obviously is a huge concern and the other cylinders are all pretty much the same. They're relative to each other, uh, they're the same. Okay, so we definitely have a compression issue with that much of a loss causing the misfire on cylinder two. So there's no reason to check ignition or fuel or anything like that. You need to fix the, the mechanical issue first before it's ever gonna fire. Okay, so if we don't address this, there's no reason to go after ignition and fuel. So we need to make sure that the engine is okay since this is a base engine concern. Now, some of these have an issue with uh, valve springs breaking. I've personally never seen one in a 543 valve, uh, but there's plenty of reports of them out there. I've seen broken springs on uh, you know, other Ford engines, but not the 543 valve, but anything's possible. So today we're gonna take you into bank one over there, and we're gonna open it up and see why we're losing compression over there. We're gonna walk you through the steps to pinpoint that next. 
All right, so looking under the hood here, uh, we can see it, like I said, it's basically stock, you know, aftermarket battery, uh, but otherwise everything's intact on here, no cold air intakes, all different hoses and everything are in place here, no hack job repairs. Uh, the fan shroud's of course missing on there. So we're gonna send a concentrate come right over to cylinder number two. So on the 543 valve, most Ford V8s, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So the second one back on the passenger side is number two. So we're gonna concentrate here. Now the first thing that I look for because on this generation engine, 04 through mid-year 08 with the old style spark plugs, um, the spark plug torque is 25 foot-pounds. And a lot of people that come in here, you know, owners and shops, and put plugs in here, they're not used to torquing them that high. So they don't torque them enough and they actually back out and they start making a like a valve train noise or if they really back out, they can cause a compression loss and a base engine misfire. Yeah, so uh, the first thing we're gonna check is to see if someone's been in here. And sure enough, you can see right there, the Denso, I believe, coils. So obviously they put coils on here, they put new plugs in here. So that's the first thing we're gonna check when we pull off the coil and plug out of there to see if there's any kind of compression loss in there. And I'll show you what to look for on that. So. I'm gonna put you up here on the side here and we're gonna start pulling things apart. All right, now with a couple of hoses and harnesses out of the way, we can get access to cylinder number two's ignition coil and pull it out. So it's unbolted, unclipped. We're gonna pull it straight up and out of here and we're going to inspect it first thing. So the, what you're looking for is any kind of white streaking on here, lightning looking marks on here. That would indicate the spark plug is arcing through the boot on here and we're getting a misfire that way. So this one looks good to go. But more importantly, you wanna check the boot from here on down for a tannish brownish soot that's gonna be on there and then give it a good sniff, sniff it and smell and see if it smells like raw exhaust gases. That would indicate the spark plug down there is loose causing a ticking tapping noise and potentially a compression loss uh, causing our misfire. This one looks good to go all the way around, smells good. Uh, so for the heck of it, we're gonna go ahead and check the spark plug torque. You can just do this by hand. Standard 3 8 uh, ratchet on here, and then a 916 socket. Yep, nice and tight. So we're good to go there. So unfortunately for this customer, it's not as easy as a spark plug that's loose. We need to actually go into the engine. So we're gonna pull this right hand valve cover next. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting all stuff out of the way. And then I'll bring you guys back for the reveal once we pull the valve cover off. We're looking for a broken valve spring. That's the best case scenario at this point. If it's not that, then you know uh, we need to at least a cylinder head, if not an engine at that point. Hopefully it's just a valve spring. All right, here we go, moment of truth. So for reference, once again, this is cylinder one, two, three, and four. We're going after cylinder number two. So it's ready to come off of here. And we're gonna see what is going on. Try and get this guy off of here without knocking any dirt in the cylinders. There we go. Get this up and off of here. One, two, okay. So let's see, everything is still in place. Checking the roller followers, see if any of them are extremely loose. Uh, then we're gonna light down here. We're gonna start checking the valve spring. So the cam's not tore up or anything. Uh, looks extra dirty on this one right here, which is the exhaust going down. Our keepers are in for this one and this one, it looks like. Piece of dirt right there. Yeah, keepers are there and there. Um, valve spring looks good there. And there. Now these ones are pretty deep in the head. Uh, so what you wanna do is just kinda try to move them with a cat claw like this or a screwdriver. Just try and move them. If they're not under high spring tension because they're collapsed, um, you'll be able to move them around. These ones I can't move on the intake. Okay, we're good to go here. Now again, the uh, exhaust right here on top of the 
roller follower, it's extra dirty. It's like a weird oil mess on top of there. All the followers look okay. The valve springs look okay. And we're going to have to get a mirror down for that one. Let's take a closer look at the valve train components on cylinder number two. So the first thing we're going to inspect is the camshaft lobes right here. They all look like they're in really good shape. No problems there. Uh, I pulled the roller followers out already so you guys have a better look and they were in really good shape. I checked the uh, lash adjusters. They're nice and rock hard so there's no problems there. So the last thing we're going to inspect on here is the valve stem and the springs themselves. So the tip of the, the valve stems are intact. A lot of times I see those broken off. Um, so those are intact. Our keepers are in place, our retainers are in place, and what I did is I side-loaded each one of these with a, a cat claw, kind of got in there, moved them around a little bit, checked the spring tension on them, and they're both nice and even. If there's any question if anything's broken down here, how tight or it should be, how much resistance it should have in the spring uh, tension, just compare it to the cylinder next door that's in fine shape, okay? You can check right away and have a comparison right there. So the next thing I did is I went down here to the exhaust valve again. Uh, the tip is good to go. You can see it right there, good to go, not damaged. Our keepers are in place, retainer, and our spring looks good to go also. It's a little hard to get down there and see, so again, I compared it to a known good cylinder over here. Now the one thing I uh, did before I pulled the valve cover is I actually pulled uh, the spark plug out and I put a boroscope down there, check the cylinder wall, and it's hard to tell if it's actually damaged down inside of there. I see some kind of chunking in the cylinder wall, uh, but when I pulled the spark plug out, I did definitely see a, I definitely saw a problem, let's just say. Um, it was pretty obvious. So what I'll do is I'll get you in here so you guys can see. So this right here is a Motorcraft SP546, which is a new, one of the latest part numbers for the 543 valve. So these were put in pretty recently, uh, but you can see the, the ceramic on there is broken. So chunks of the ceramic are broken and down in the cylinder. And if the piece breaks off, like let's say in one big piece coming off of here and it's floating around the cylinder, and it tries to go through one of the intake or exhaust valves on there, it can definitely bend it enough to have a compression loss on there uh, where it's not seating properly and of course cause a misfire after that. So for whatever reason, there's no damage to the, the ground strap on here, or the center electrode, just the ceramic is missing, which was floating around the cylinder, probably ruined one of the valves on there. Okay, so that is where our issue lies. It's not in the valve tray itself, good to go there. Uh, but definitely need some valve work on there. So that is an issue. Either way, I wanted to inspect the valve train because valve train components on here are so uh, troublesome in the 543 valve. And also for our next step, an air test to isolate which uh, valve it is, um, we're gonna do an air test down the cylinder. So I like to have the valve cover off, the followers out, so I know all these valves are definitely seated and they should be, there should be no air loss from the intake or the exhaust side on there. So the next thing we're gonna do is put an adapter down in there and do an air test to see where uh, it's leaking on there. All right, so for this test, I just use a standard compression tester like you see here, uh, but we don't need to do a compression test. We already know it's down. Uh, so we're just gonna use one of these test adapters. We're gonna pull out uh, the valve core that's inside of there we're gonna put our test adapter on for the 543 valve special spark plugs. Uh, and then we're just simply gonna attach air to the end of it here and put air down in the cylinder. And that's gonna put the cylinder, uh, the piston all the way down. And of course, all the valves are already closed. Uh, so we should have no air leakage going on. Uh, that'll do a good air test on there. I prefer this when we have a large leak like this over using a cylinder leakage tester. We already know we have a leak. Uh, we're trying to see where it's actually leaking out of, and this will tell us in full force of the air is going to come into there, and uh, it's going to tell us right away where it's leaking at. Here we go, moment of truth, the air test. This is such a great tool for diagnosing engines. It'll tell us exactly where our compression loss is occurring. So again, like I said earlier, all the roller followers are removed from cylinder two, so all the valves are closed, nice and tight, being held there by spring pressure. There should be no loss of compression past the exhaust or intake valves on here. 
Now remember, when we're applying air pressure to the cylinder, it's gonna force the piston down the bottom dead center. So it may rotate the engine on you. So make sure any kind of harnesses and stuff like that are out of the way and everything is good to go. And then we're simply just gonna apply air pressure to the cylinder and listen for a leak. So that right there is a huge, huge leak. You're always gonna hear some uh, air being bled off into the crankcase case past the compression ring. Don't worry about that at all, okay? What you wanna do is concentrate on both the intake and the exhaust valves on there. So you simply pull off the air intake snorkel on there and then listen on the intake and see if there's any air leakage into the intake. I'm not hearing anything over here. So next, you're simply gonna walk to the back of the vehicle and you're gonna listen at the exhaust side of it to check the exhaust valve. Come over and take a listen. Yeah, it's leaking pretty bad back here. If it's not leaking so much on yours, you're not sure if it's leaking, I don't know why. Uh, wet finger test, lick it and put it right there and you'll be able to tell if it's leaking out the exhaust pipe on there. This one, I mean, blowing my hand off of here. It's pretty obvious there's a huge leak from the exhaust valve on this vehicle. So right there, we diagnosed it, we pinpointed it. We know exactly what to tell the customer. We know the exhaust valve is leaking on there due to deb debris getting into the cylinder, uh, damaging the valve and the seat on there. So at this point, the cylinder head must be removed and he may even need an engine depending if there's damage to the cylinder wall inside of there. So we know exactly what to tell the customer. And that's how you pinpoint a problem like this. They're not all easy issues like timing issues or roller followers that failed or valve springs that have failed. Sometimes it's much deeper inside the engine and you need to use the proper tools to pinpoint it so you know exactly what to quote and what to tell the customer. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.